So here we are and we're going to start uh, D5. So remembering that previously our work on penicillin was part of our D2 aspect of the course. So now we're going to start uh, D5 uh, part of our option which looks at antiviral medications. These often turn up in questions uh, for the assessment where we look at a comparison between antibacterials and antivirals, which means one of the first things we need to do is investigate what is difference between a virus and a bacterium and we will look at that in this video. So the things that we need to understand for uh, our D5 understandings, applications and skills is the structure of a virus, so how it is different to targeting things with antibacterials and antivirals. Uh, antiviral drugs alter the cell's genetic material, um, preventing virus multiplication, and we'll look at that in detail. You need to be able to explain the different ways in which antiviral medications work. You need to be able to describe how viruses differ from bacteria. You need to be able to explain how Tamiflu and Relenza work as preventative agents against flu viruses. You need to compare the structures of um, these two drugs, aninavir and um, oseltamivir, so Tamiflu and Relenza, um, which are again provided in the last two pages, page 38 and 39 in section 37 of your data booklet. So again, this is going back to functional groups and comparison of structures, so hopefully you're reviewing those as we go along. And you need to be able to discuss, which means a fairly extended response question with little structuring on the difficulties associated with the AIDS problem and treating uh, AIDS with antivirals. So let's get started. Viruses are responsible for many different types of diseases in our society, including AIDS, influenza, rabies, the common cold, smallpox, measles. A lot of things that we have vaccines for are actually caused by viruses rather than bacteria. There are many, many different types of virus, okay, and how they vary is dependent on their structures, okay, and their sh shape. So all these things down here are actually different viruses, and the protein coat outside the virus uh, has different shapes. We can have DNA or RNA viruses. The viral envelope is different between each one. So the overall structure of them can vary quite differently, but they do have a common um, way that they are formed. That is, they all contain a central core of genetic material. Okay, so this is not like the nucleus of a cell. It is just... <clears throat> Uh, viral DNA or viral RNA, which is then surrounded by a protein coat, which is a capsid. Okay, and then they have uh, no cytoplasm, no organelles, none of the normal uh, cell machinery that we see in bacteria or human or plant cells. Okay, so there's none of that cellular machinery. Um, and then they have this viral envelope and surface proteins that allow them to interact with cells, but they are considered to be non-living. They are not able to replicate on their own. They require a host cell for reproduction and they have no cellular organelles. Okay, so they have none of that normal cellular machinery that we see with uh, living cells. So viruses work by attaching to the host cell surface. So this is usually in interactions between the proteins on the outside of the virus and the uh, membrane of the, the cell. Okay, after that happens, due to intermolecular forces and cellular interactions, the virus DNA can penetrate into, it's injected into the uh, cell here whether it be a bacteria or a plant or a, a, a human cell. Okay, so the viral DNA is injected into the cell, whereas the bulk of the virus now remains outside. Once that DNA is in the cell, replication of that viral DNA is replicated by the host cell itself. So the DNA polymerase and the viral, uh, the cellular machinery actually goes about replicating the viral DNA. It then hijacks the, the, the machinery within the cell to produce new protein coats 
package up the virus into the mature virions, which are assembled within the cell, and then the cell ruptures and releases the new viral packets. <clears throat> Okay, which then start it all over again. So generally on maturation of the virus, the host cell is killed. Okay, and it releases far more viral particles than the initial one that infected it. So if we look at the differences between bacteria and viruses, bacteria are self-reproducing. So they do this by binary fission. They uh, expand, divide their DNA, build a new cell wall and divide okay they grow they feed they excrete waste uh, they have organelles they have um, different functions vacuoles okay uh, the golgi in terms of chemistry we don't need to know each of the um, organelles that are present in bacteria such as mitochondria or your smooth RER, uh, ER or any of those okay what you do need to know is simply that that cellular machinery the organelles do not exist within a virus but they do exist within bacteria bacteria are actually much much larger than virus particles okay uh, so this one over here is actually based on a bacteriophage, which is a type of virus that can infect bacteria. They have more complex DNA, so the strands of DNA in living cells tend to be much longer, more complex, and they mutate and multiply slower than viruses. So one of the key things that we need to remember is that in order to replicate, viruses need a host cell. So they're not self-reproducing, okay, as they need the host to multiply, okay, the, um, and that the host cell dies after the maturation of the virus. Viruses have no metabolic function, so they have no organelles, they have no ability to grow, feed, reproduce, or anything like that. They are simply carriers of viral uh, genetic information. So that genetic material, okay, has a protective coating, but it has no cell wall, no nucleus, no cytoplasm or anything like that. Viruses are smaller than bacteria. They have simpler DNA and they replicate and multiply much faster using the um, machinery of the bacterial or uh, the host cell um, than what the host cells do themselves. So if we think about that in terms of how drugs usually work, where they work on receptor sites, they work in particular organelles or changing the metabolic function of a cell is usually how drugs will work. This means that targeting viruses for diseases and targeting viruses in terms of how the drugs will interact with them is quite a challenge. Okay, and given that we see quite a rise in viruses and viral uh, diseases uh, within our society it is a big concern so because viruses mutate more quickly they can adapt to drugs or inv invade um, a new system so we saw with SARS um, and H1N1 so bird flu um, and swine flu that what we saw there was that uh, viruses that were affecting other species quickly mutated to be able to affect humans as well and this is quite a, a dramatic thing and um, something that then um, viral scientists need to work very quickly to be able to figure out how we can um, combat these um, and target these new viruses because they come around quite quickly so because bacteria are more complex, we can target them in more ways through the um, production of the new cell wall or different metabolic processes. But we can't target those normal processes that we use for antibacterials in order to treat viruses. Okay, so bacteria um, can generally be killed or their actions reduced by chemical agents but we can't kill a virus because they're not alive. So they have to be targeted on the genetic level. We need to be able to stop the injection of that gene genetic material or stop the replication of that genetic material or stop it from being released from the cell. We can't break down the virus itself because it's not living, so we can't kill it. 
So um, again, we can't target these metabolic processes either. <clears throat> So if we have a look, uh, this is actually a life cycle of the influenza virus. So the influenza virus starts over here, attaches to the outside of the cell. It is brought into the cell usually via endocytosis or an active mechanism where it is brought in. Okay, it is then internalized. The cellular uh, machinery replicates, the, in this case, the viral RNA. We get synthesis of viral proteins, and then we have new virions budding off. Okay, so essentially it needs to be able to attach the cell, move into the cell, and then out. But at no point is any of this living, so we can't target its metabolic processes. We need to sort of be able to stop this process here, or this process here, or if we're lucky, stop this process here. But we can't just simply kill the virus. We need to stop those replication processes within the host cell, hopefully without damaging the host cell too much. So targeting the virus specifically is difficult. So many antivirals are developed to interfere with the viral life cycle. So those points that we just looked at there. We can do this by prevention of the viral particle release from the host cell. So that's, they can still get in, they can still be made, but then we stop them from being released. We can alter the cell's DNA so that the virus can't multiply. So in this section here where we would usually multiply the DNA, we're going to stop that process and stop the synthesis of the viral DNA. Or we can simply block the host cell's enzyme activity, which means all the packaging and the formation of the viral uh, protein coats and stuff can't happen. So the, the complete virus, the virus can't mature and it can't be released from that point because you won't be developing a complete viral packet. Okay, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how antiviruses uh, and bacteria are different. And then we will look at two case studies, one on influenza and one on HIV as our examples of antiviral medications.